60 to 70% of cats in the United States are considered overweight to obese. As an emergency critical care veterinary specialist, I see a diabetic cat at least once a day in the ER. That's because there's a growing prevalence of insulin resistance secondary to obesity. The better shape your cat is in, the lower the risk of medical conditions like osteoarthritis, diabetes mellitus, urinary problems, heart disease, and more. How can I tell if I have an obese cat? As a veterinarian, I look at the Purina Body Condition Score, or BCS, where one is emaciated and nine is morbidly obese. The ideal BCS for a cat is four out of nine. Most cats should weigh 10 pounds. That doesn't sound like much when your cat is 12 pounds, but that may be 10 to 20% over his or her ideal body weight. Ideally, you should be able to feel your cat's ribs, but not see them. Your cat shouldn't have a large paunch or belly. So, how do I help my cat lose weight? First, cut back on the calories. Talk to your veterinarian about a lower calorie cat food and consider cutting back on the amount of kibble by at least 25%. Most cats only need a quarter cup of dry food twice per day. Make sure to use an actual measuring cup when scooping out the food. Next, make sure you're feeding your cat for his ideal weight. For example, many pet owners follow the bag's instructions and feed for their 12-pound cat when they should be feeding for a 10-pound cat based on ideal body weight. Also, make sure you're feeding the right type of food. If your cat is over 9 to 10 months of age, it should be transitioned to an adult cat food instead of kitten food. You can also consider using environmental enrichment feeding techniques or food puzzles so your cat has to slow down to eat and play or work to earn his kibble. At the least, you can use something as simple as a clean muffin pan so your cat doesn't gorge and eat all at once. Instead, he's forced to forage for his food and eat more slowly. Consider using an automatic pet feeder so you know your cat is getting the exact amount of food that he needs. So, what should I feed my cat? Honestly, any balanced AFCO-approved cat food is appropriate. While there are several fad cat-type diets out there, my general advice is talk to your veterinarian about what is best to feed. When we talk about fad diets, you may have heard of the gluten-free, grain-free, or even raw food diets out there. Please know that most cats do not actually require a grain-free or a gluten-free diet as celiac disease or gluten allergies are rarely reported in cats. There's no data to support the idea that grain-free diets are better for pets. It's a marketing ploy. There have been some recent reports of dogs developing severe heart disease called dilated cardiomyopathy, or DCM, as a result of grain-free diets. Know that a small amount of carbohydrate is necessary to create and form the dry food kibble. Many grain-free pet foods are made with starch from potatoes or lentils, and they may be higher in fat. If you cut grains but increase calories, your pet is potentially going to gain weight. For pet owners who choose to feed their animals an all-meat diet, it's essential to add supplements to make sure their pet isn't missing out on key nutrients such as calcium and other minerals. Experts especially caution against feeding pets raw meat. It's not uncommon to find bacteria like Salmonella and E. coli or even Listeria in raw meat. When it comes to understanding pet food labels and picking the best food for your cat, find a company that employs a veterinary nutritionist and does feeding trials. Try not to get too hung up on the no list. Claims like no gluten, no grains, and no soy may mean no science. One in doubt, Work with a veterinary nutritionist to ensure that the diet that you're feeding, even if it's homemade, is balanced appropriately to help keep your cat healthy.